Uh, I'm Josiah Knight. Uh, my uh, three main roles are in uh, mechanical engineering uh, and the Energy and Environment Certificate, which I co-direct with Emily Klein. And uh, I have a, a mainly a teaching role and a curriculum development role in the Energy Engineering minor, uh, working with Mark DeZeus. So I only have two slides. Uh, if um, uh, up, I regret not including a, a result slide uh, in here, but um, if a picture is worth a thousand words and a graph is worth ten thousand words, maybe some hand gestures are worth a hundred words. So I might do some of those. Uh, my uh, main areas of interest uh, are in solar thermal energy, uh, not only for passive and heating uses, but also for power generation, because it's possible that. Uh, quite high efficiencies might be achieved for power generation on small scales. Uh, so my interest is in developing and promoting uh, small and intermediate scale power generation as opposed to large scale solar fields and large uh, power towers. So this is more in line with distributed generation. Um, so I'm uh, interested in focusing collectors, as you may have gathered from uh, Nico's uh, talk just a moment ago, uh, the, uh, the um, desire for a focusing collector or the motivation for a focusing collector is to obtain much higher temperatures than you can obtain with any sort of uh, flat panel or, or flat aperture. Uh, and so I want to apply this uh, high temperature focused energy to heat engines for power generation. This is being done in some demonstration scale facilities in which a parabolic dish uh, focuses uh, sunlight onto a, uh, its focal point and located there is a heat engine of some sort. Mostly that would be a Stirling engine and uh, then with a small generator connected to that. So you've got a heat engine generator set local to each one of the focusing dishes and these dishes do the tracking independently of one another. Uh, so I'm interested in the geometries of this for uh, optimizing the absorption of energy and the conversion of energy. And um, interestingly enough, the first uh, aspect of this, this is one of the Stirling engines that we've built in our lab. Interestingly enough, the um, first aspect of this that got support from anywhere was uh, the application of possibly using this in space for power gen for space vehicles or for extraterrestrial habitats. So the part of that that's most challenging results from a uh, heat transfer aspect that at first is extremely appealing to engineers. If you think about heat engines and you know about how to characterize the efficiency of a heat engine, it's normally done as a Carnot efficiency, which has the ratio of the hot temperature or the cold temperature to the hot temperature, uh, and that in, uh, determines the upper limit to the amount of energy that you could convert. And so engineers are all familiar with this. Most uh, scientists are familiar with this Carnot efficiency. But if you want to analyze using an engine in space, the first thing that occurs to you might be that the heat rejection should be great because you're rejecting heat to absolute zero, essentially. It sounds like a fantastic scenario, but when you look at it in a little more detail, uh, you realize that there is actually a, a, quite a limitation because the entire mode of heat transfer for heat rejection has to be radiation. There's no convection component, right? The temperature is very low, but it all must be done by radiating from some kind of exposed area. So what we're able to do is um, look at this and develop a closed form model for the performance of a heat engine for power gen or other purposes in space where the rejection is to deep space at essentially absolute zero temperature. And uh, uh, it depends, what the conclusion you would reach depends on where you are, uh, of course, because it depends on how much energy comes in. And the reason everything has to be reanalyzed from that old temperature ratio model uh, that we're familiar with uh, for a Carnot efficiency 
is that the heat input is limited. That comes from solar. And the heat rejection is limited by radiation. So you actually reach a different conclusion than you might expect, or at least different from what I expected. Am I out of time already? Uh, which is that the, the efficiency of the unit is highly dependent on the area that you use as a radiator to deep space. And uh, the uh, efficiency of the unit actually goes down as that radiation area is increased rather than up. Uh, and uh, other considerations come into play for the actual physical sizing of everything, but uh, sometimes a, a counterintuitive conclusion is reached. Uh, this general notion has applications to other systems in which the heat input is limited, and there are some other limitations on heat transfer. One might think of biofueled applications uh, or uh, other um, uh, heat scavenging kind of applications. Uh, I won't get into the, the uh, transportation aspect because uh, I'm out of time, but I'm also interested in the application of a variety of technologies for alternative uh, propulsion for transportation and uh, energy conservation. Thank you.